This channel became a motorcycle channel in early 2019 when I bought a 2014 Moto Guzzi Stelvio 1200 NTX and started motovlogging around Toronto. Fast forward 4 years and the Moto Guzzi Stelvio is relegated to dusty motorcycling history books, something about the old air-cooled V-twin not meeting Euro emissions. Moto Guzzi built the V85TT, I'm riding a Yamaha Tenere 700, my wife Brooke is on a Honda CRF 300L rally. The channel has grown and the world has moved on. But wait a second, because the Stelvio is about to make its return and everything old is new again. To find out more, stay tuned, and if you like the content, please consider subscribing and liking and sharing this video with friends. My time on the old Stelvio was a love-hate affair. I love the character of the big transversely mounted air-cooled V-twin. To anyone used to Harleys or Ducatis, this architecture looks weird, but if there's one manufacturer that understands how to build character into their motorcycles, it's Moto Guzzi. The bike sounded awesome even with the stock pipe, the dry clutch clacked along like a symphony, it vibrated without being annoying, had plenty of torque, enough power to be entertaining, and was massively comfortable for both rider and passenger. The V-Twin was perfectly positioned to be mated with a maintenance-free shaft drive and it also came with engine guards, heated grips, aluminum bags and a luggage rack, stock. However, it weighed as much as a small car, probably over 600 pounds, and with the bags on was as wide as one. It was terrifying off-pavement, top-heavy and slow-speed maneuvers, shorted out fuses like a and most important of all, experienced a massive engine failure which necessitated a full rebuild, 3,500 bucks Canadian. Parts took forever to arrive from Italy and were expensive, and the incident cost me nearly half the season without my motorcycle. I got it fixed and immediately traded it for the Tenere. I couldn't justify owning a bike that I didn't trust to get me home. Now, before you think I'm crapping all over Moto Guzzi here, I'm sure that there are Stelvios that run over 100,000 miles without a problem, that just wasn't my experience. I might have had a dud, perhaps the previous owner didn't do the proper maintenance, and Moto Guzzi may have come a long way since 2014 when that bike rolled off the assembly line. So despite my negative experiences, I was interested to hear that the Stelvio name is to be revived by Moto Guzzi which currently has only one adventure bike, the mid-sized V85 TT. However, at this year's EICMA Motorcycle Show in Milan, Italy, Moto Guzzi teased the return of the Stelvio with a display that showed two spoked motorcycle wheels in front of a picture of the switchbacks going up the famed Stelvio Mountain Pass. The word Stelvio was on the top of the display while the words returning soon were underneath. Now soon is a nebulous term, but hopefully that means a 2024 release. I wouldn't qualify anything after that as soon. So what do we know about this new Stelvio? Moto Guzzi has recently celebrated the introduction of its V100 Mandelo Sport Tour, which is significant because this bike has Moto Guzzi's first liquid-cooled engine, a 1042cc 90-degree transversely mounted V-twin punching out about 115 horsepower and 77 pound-feet of torque, and like all Moto Guzzi's, getting that torque down to the ground via shaft drive. For a heritage brand like Moto Guzzi, this is huge as its customers expect a certain look, feel and experience, and it is dangerous to deviate from tradition. This is why many call Moto Guzzi the Italian Harley. But it can't be denied that the new engine offers improved performance and reduced emissions which makes it the perfect basis for reviving the Stelvio. The original Stelvio which had an 1151cc air-cooled engine that laid down 105 horsepower and 83 pound-feet of torque had fallen behind bikes like the new at the time liquid-cooled BMW R1200 GS in performance and was heavy for the class. The new engine will be down on size, pitting it against the Africa Twin and Suzuki V-Strom 1050, but would produce more power than those bikes. However, Moto Guzzi's use of shaft drive while being maintenance-free does add weight. The V100 Mandelo weighs about 515 pounds wet, so a new Stelvio would weigh as much or more, which is heavy when compared to the base Africa Twin which weighs 505 pounds wet. Now truthfully, an extra 10 to 20 pounds on a 500 plus pound bike does not feel much different. For most adventure riders, the convenience of shaft drive is worth some extra pounds, a fact illustrated by the popularity of the BMW R1250 GS, the top-selling big ADV bike. 
Still, spec sheets have some influence on sales, so Motoguzzi will have to keep the numbers reasonable. So, if I was to engage in some dubious speculation, I'd say that the new Motoguzzi Stelvia will have some 115 horsepower, 77 pound-feet of torque, will weigh around 520 pounds, will look and sound good as all Motoguzzi's do, and will hopefully be comfortable. It probably won't be the huge rumbly beast like the last Stelvio, but will be more civilized, lighter and more off-road capable like the V85TT. With the engine from the V100 Mandelo, it should be plenty powerful and, of course, like all Guzzi's, it will be shaft-driven and relatively easy to work on due to the fact that the cylinder heads stick out the sides and are easily accessed. Will riders buy this bike in droves? I think they will buy it, perhaps not in the numbers that the big BMW sells, but it will be a sought-after motorcycle. This segment is very crowded, but if Moto Guzzi can deliver a shaft-driven adventure bike that is a bit lighter than the GS and has some Italian flair, it will definitely attract riders. Will I buy it? I'm happy with my smaller and lighter Tenere 700, and I like to ride that motorcycle on trails that may be a bit much for the big bikes. But I'm not representative of most adventure riders who use their motorcycles more for touring than off-roading. And for touring, that old Stelvio I had was perfect. Big, stable, powerful, and comfortable. So no, I won't buy it, but I'm sure plenty of riders will be interested. What do you think of a new Moto Guzzi Stelvio? Would you take a look at one when it comes out, or would the Africa Twin be more to your liking? How important is that shaft drive to you? Please share your thoughts in the comments, and ride safe. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up, and may the spokes be with you.